it's Darby from rejoicingcreate.com. Thanks for stopping by today. Well, I have a fun project today and I geared it towards Mother's Day. It's one of these uh, box books and I created it um, for a specific size and purpose and that was to hold seeds. Uh, this is a standard seed packet, packet here in America and my mother loves gardening and she loves wildflowers. So I thought I'd go ahead and gift her two uh, packets of seeds. Now this box is a little bit more unique in the fact that it does have a pocket in the front and you can stick a card in there and I'll show you how I made that card. Or perhaps you could personalize some of the smaller plant markers to uh, go in there as well. They'll tuck in there nicely too. But this box is three and a half inches wide by five inches long by one half inch deep. So I'm sure there's many other things that you can find to go in there as well. Perhaps a full-size Ritter Sport, some other candy bars. You can fit some of the larger full-size tea bags in there. And you can also fit some of these uh, Folgers coffee singles in there as well. And that's what I'm going to do today because I'm going to try to make a Father's Day themed one as well. But you could personalize this for pretty much any occasion. So let me show you what we need. For the cover of the box, I used a piece of cardstock that is 11 and 7 eighths inch long by five and a half inches wide. And it's essentially a 12 inch piece of cardstock with one eighth of an inch trimmed off the end. For the box itself, I used a piece of cardstock that is four and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches long. I matted the front of the flap and the back of the front flap as well. And if you want to do that, you need two pieces of pattern paper that are three and a half inches wide by five and three eighths inches long. And for the reveal behind the front pocket, I used a piece that was three and a half by three and a half inches. And then just gather whatever decorations and sentiments that you want to finish the box. And you have a very sweet present for someone. All right, so you wanna score the 11 and 7 eighths inch side of the cover up at three and three quarters, th seven and a half, and eight and one eighth. And that one eighth of an inch gives that box room to sit so you can close the uh, cover well. All right, let me get that one out. And for the box itself, we're going to score it at one half an inch, one inch, six inches, and six and a half inches. Then you want to turn it to the side and score it at one half of an inch on each side. And I do it by scoring one side and then turning around and scoring the other side because that way if I didn't cut it exactly, um, the sides will still be scored exactly in the same way. All right, let's go ahead and make our box first. And I have the two half inch sections to the left and I realize this is dark, so I actually made a template. And if you want to use a decorative edge along there, go ahead and do that now. Just make sure it doesn't cut into that half an inch too much. For the Mother's Day version, I actually used a scalloped border right along the edge. But for this Father's Day version, I'm not going to uh, make it too fancy looking. I'll make it a little bit more simple. And what we're going to do is, um, full, after we fold and burnish, we're going to cut and notch those four square tabs on the sides. Okay, so we have, just like the template, we have um, folded and burnished all our score lines and we've notched in on each of those tabs. And if you want to, you can go ahead and trim a little bit of a decorative edge along the top. So let's go ahead and put this together and we're going to do the bottom first, fold those tabs in, fold those front side flaps in, and we're gonna put glue on them. Now for my box, I actually used liquid glue because I believe it holds it a lot better, but because I make a mess with it, if I'm trying to do it on video, I'm actually gonna just use some Tombow Extreme because it will go faster and I will stick to fewer things on my tabletop. All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna fold these up 
square up the bottom and fold the sides up to meet them. And I'm gonna make sure I stick my finger in there and just tuck that tab up against the side as well. Okay, now I'm gonna burnish. Make sure it's stuck really well. We're gonna do the exact same thing for the top. Okay, so there's our box. We'll go ahead and set that aside for a minute while we do the cover. Let me show you the template for the cover. And as you can see, we have that binder for uh, the back right there and our front flap folds right there. So let's go ahead and fold and burnish those score lines. Okay, so what we're going to do now is fold this in and we're going to round all the corners because I like it rounded. So you have to fold that in because this is going to be your uh, book cover and you want to go ahead and round corners. If you want to, you can leave them square. Okay. The last thing we're going to is we're actually going to fold over this corner and because it's rounded I'm going to put my finger right where that rounding ends because I want that to be seen and just above the halfway point over here. And if you want to use a ruler to um, kind of stabilize it as you fold it you can do that. Now the reason we do it just above the halfway point is if you want to run a ribbon we're going to hide it behind both that flap and the mat for the um, inside of the cover. All right, so there we go. Now you don't need a ribbon to close it. You can actually use a Velcro dot or you can use a, um, if you want to use just a belly band as well. And that I just have a piece of one inch cardstock that is um, 10 inches long and simply fold it around, glue it together and put your embellishment on there. Or you can use a Velcro dot to close this as well, depending on how, how much you put on the front so you don't want to catch on it. So you could use a belly band, you could use a Velcro dot, but I'm going to show you how I did the ribbon. All right, so let's go ahead and mat the front side of the pocket. All right, so I have my mats and let me go ahead and because this is going to be seen, I'm going to round those two corners. After I round those corners, I'm just going to go ahead and line it up and I'm going to just make a mark where this folds and this folds. And I'm just gonna cut from side to side. All right, then I'm gonna go ahead and glue it in place. All right, now if I'm running a ribbon, what I want to do is I want to actually cut a little slit that is going to be right on this side of this uh, edge right here, a quarter of an inch in, because what it's going to do is it's going to match up with the, the um, ribbon that will come out of underneath the box when we glue it there. So about halfway down, and I'm going to pull out my mat my self-sealing mat. So I just took my ribbon and I laid it across right at the level where I want to and it's about halfway across. Make sure it's below where you folded that. And then about a quarter of an inch from that seam I'm just going to make a slit about the width of the ribbon. All right, so let's go ahead and thread that ribbon through the slit, pop it through. And I can move that out of the way now. And I'm gonna tie a knot in this one because it's more of a guy thing and I think the knots are more of a guy thing. So I want the same amount coming out from this side of the slit as I do from this side of the slit so I can tie a nice little knot. And then I'm gonna put some glue across there 
and glue it down. Now stop your glue one quarter of an inch from this end because it's going to come out from there under the box. All right, now we can go ahead and mat our inside piece. So take your uh, three and a half by three and a half and glue that down. And I'm paying attention to the top and down the inside of the box because this side will be covered up with the um, flap and the pocket. All right, so go ahead and press that down. All right, and now just glue down the side and the bottom of your pocket. And I definitely use liquid glue on this one because it holds stronger for me. Sometimes my pop tapes, especially here in humid Florida. All right, so we'll glue that, glue that in. And if you need to pull your little, glue that down. Now I should have mentioned before, but on my Mother's Day one, before you glue this flap, if you want to do a decorative edge or a decorative corner punch, which I actually did a decorative corner punch, but then I went and hit it with my flower. But if you want to have a decorative corner punch to make it look pretty, maybe if you're putting a doily or something on there, um, go ahead and do that before you glue this pocket down. All right, and we'll close that up. And we can go ahead and mat our front as well. And now because this one will be corners on the right, go ahead and round those as well. Or not, if you don't want them rounded, that's fine too. All right, so while our front is flat, let's go ahead and um, embellish it. And I went ahead already and cut out some things for it. Now, if you're using a belly band, you might want to use this to decorate your belly band with so it'll slide on and off easier. But because I'm using a ribbon, I'm going to go ahead and glue this right on the front of my uh, book box. And let me go ahead and open up so we can uh, decorate the inside as well. And then to decorate this, I just cut out some of the uh, images from the inside of the paper. All right, so let's go ahead and glue our box back into place. And we're going to glue both the back and the side that contacts here. So it'll be glued like this. Center it top to bottom and butt it right against the um, score line. And then we go ahead and rub that down. And then turn it on its side and hold that down as well because that's going to take a minute to dry. Let's go ahead and press that in. All right, so you can go ahead and close it up and put something on it to hold it for a moment while it dries because you want it to be secure. All right, so now what I did with this one is I just cut a strip of the same paper uh, that had a different pattern on it and flagged the ends. And I used Celebrate Your Day, which came from Hello Cupcake. and. Um, use the uh, tailored label punch I think it's called because it has a more masculine shape I think and I'm just going to glue that to the front of my box and hold that in there for my card I went ahead and used one of these pre-made card bases and it's actually the tall note card I think um, it is five inches wide by four and a half inches tall and I scored it at two and a half inches in the middle. So the card ends up being two and a half inches by four and a half inches. And I just double matted it. So my card stock was um, two and three eighths by four and three eighths. And my patterned matte layer is two and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then I just embellished it with another 
image that was fussy cut out of the same paper works well. Go ahead and tuck that into your little pocket. Oh, and you know, a little wooden spoon would look really cute here, but I don't have any. Let me tuck my coffee packets in there. And let's go ahead and tie that up. And I'm going to use a knot. But I want to make sure I have, I'm actually, because this one, this ribbon tends to fray a bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a knot in each end of the ribbon and cut it short so it will stay looking good and pull that really tight all right so i'm going to go ahead and tie it in a little bit of a knot and there we go the masculine version of the book box. So I hope you enjoyed the project today. A book box that was designed for seed packets, coffee or tea, or whatever you want to put in it. If you liked the video, please subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to be notified of new videos as I upload them. For more information on this project or other projects I've done, please go to rejoiceandcreate.com. And as always, until we meet again, may all your days be blessed. Bye!